Hey, welcome back. Kyle Ross here with Hydro Mind. In this video, I'm going to share with you five surf fitness tips that were absolutely life changing for me. I'm calling this video the five things I wish I knew when I was younger because um, if I had found these things out early on in life, I could avoid a lot of pain uh, um, and suffering. So for me, um, it's all I do every single day is I just look for new ways to stay in shape, um, things to fix problems as it uh, applies to health, fitness, um, happiness, all that kind of stuff. Um, and all the stuff that I do has been to fix my own problems like paddle strength. I had bad, I had endurance problems. I had flexibility problems. I had back pain. I had hip pain. Um, I was having trouble maintaining my body weight. So many different things. And the thing with fitness and health, there's no magic bullet that fixes everything. It's got to be an array of things that's always changing, um, balancing you out, depending on what your problems are. You got to add things, take things away. Um, and that's, that's customized to everyone. However, I found there's magic bullet things that affect or solve particular very specific problems so in this video you may find something that absolutely changes your life if you suffer from any of these things so these are the five things that are magic bullets that solve massive problems for me immediately so let's get right into it oh, number one is the back pain solution i suffered from it for years um it started when i was in my early 20s i hurt myself lifting something heavy because i didn't know how to use my body properly um, and i suffered forever it got progressively worse it got so bad to the point where I couldn't even get out of bed. I would like fall out of bed, crawl to the dresser, stand up. That's in my early 20s. Someone had been an athlete my whole life, so I was so, so scared. So for years, I would go to the chiropractor sometimes two, three, four times a week to, to get like minimal relief at best. Um, and that, that's just the advice everyone gave me. Like, you got to go to the chiropractor. Um, I had an inversion table, I was hanging upside down all the time. I was using that so much to relieve pain that I eventually hurt myself using the inversion table because it's the only thing that would give me relief. Um, I bought another machine called Reverse Hyper. Um, I was doing all kinds of stuff, D just basic stretches. Um, stretching has mattered a lot, uh, but the one thing is uh, proper core function. Learning how to flex my core in a way that protects my spine. And there's a test to see if you're doing it proper. And when I did the test, I'd never known this before. Learning this one thing, this one way to flex my core, a limited, almost a decade of back pain, and it's never come back. Um, I've shared it with so many people now, and I've never given this test to someone, and then I've never had someone be like, oh yeah, I already knew that. Nobody knows this stuff. Um, and so I wanna make it more common knowledge. So core function testing, I've shared this on this channel before, but I'll do it again really quickly here. So what you wanna do is lay on your back, take your hand, place it on your low back, under directly underneath your belly button. Now push down with your spine onto your fingers by flexing your core and sucking your belly button in towards your uh, spine. So you're, I'm putting pressure right now on my fingers. Now what you want to do is lift your knees. Now as you're lowering your knees, can you keep that down pressure on your fingers? So if you fail that, if you lower your knees and your pressure comes up off your fingers, you're not flexing your core in the way that protects your spine. So if you think about this, this is like simulated lifting, right? It's just on the ground. So when you're lifting, it's like you're hinging here, right? And if you can't flex those muscles while you're hinging there, um, that's when you injure yourself. And so another, another thing, a myth, you have your back has to be perfectly straight whenever you're lifting. When you do this properly, you can be twisting, you can be bending, you can have a rounded back, you can pick it up, squirming kids, opening doors, all that stuff. This applies to regular life. Um, the other part about doing this is to do it in an exercise program. So with each um, exercise, there's an inhale and an exhale. On the exhale, you always flex your core, suck your belly button in, push it down towards your spine so you make it rigid. What it's gonna do is it's gonna make flexing those muscles a subconscious reflex and it's gonna make them stronger. So you don't have to think about it. So when you're surfing, you're out there paddling, you're going from in the water to popping up on your board, you're not throwing out your back, which I've done. Um, so that is the biggest game changer. One tiny magic bullet thing, proper core function and making it part of an exercise program absolutely changed my life. I would not be surfing. I wouldn't be doing anything if my back pain had progressed um, in the direction it had been. So I'm super happy to share that with you. So that's why that's number one. Number two wow. is paddle maintenance. So preventing yourself from losing your paddle strength after you've invested all that hard work. Um, I got a great story where um, this worked out for me. So if so, people used to always say the only way to stay in shape for surfing was to actually surf because that's all about paddle strength, right? It's such a specific movement. Well, figured out a way to build it. Um, it's really built Hydro Mind, built me, um, got these massive results because being able to build it on land um, changes everything. But then it's, it's also 
It's also like a workout too. So you don't want to have a workout that you have to always do. Other if you don't lose it, you lose everything, right? So we uh, developed a method for paddle maintenance to make sure you never lose your paddle strength um, when life gets busy. Two years ago, my second son was born. We were, so now we have two kids. Um, things were super crazy. Hydro mind was blowing up. We had thousands of clients all over the world. I was still working a day job. I had a wife, family, all this stuff. It's nuts, right? I didn't have a chance to work out as hardcore as I would normally be. So I was doing paddle maintenance workouts. A paddle maintenance workout is still doing a paddle exercise, but not enough to break a sweat. So let's just say, for example, the maximum amount of reps you can do for a paddle workout is 50. This is doing like 25 or less, 10 or less. So you don't even break a sweat. It takes a couple minutes. What it does is it sends the working signal to your muscles to prevent them from atrophying. So you do not lose them. You keep them. It re-ingrains that movement pattern. So it makes paddling stay. So you don't lose it um, when things get busy. So I had the kid. I was super busy. I wasn't working on hardcore. I was just doing paddle maintenance. I went on a surf trip with my friends. Um, it was right in the middle of COVID. Uh, so we hadn't, I hadn't surfed in six months and they had been surfing all the time. So we went on a 10 day surf trip. We surfed every single day for 10 days. And at the end of the 10 days when the swell started to pick up, so it was better than ever. These guys were all sore. They were beaten up. None of them were surfing anymore. Me having surfed in six months, hadn't even worked out hardcore, only been doing tiny little workouts, surfed every single day, twice, two or three times a day and never got sore. And by the end I was surfing better than the beginning. So that just is like, like, I love when not, not when I'm proven right, but when I'm rewarded for doing the right things. It's just such a great feeling. And so for me, what I've always done, we're in a new house now, so um, they're not in a permanent location, but I would always hang my bands in a place where I see them, where it's like a high traffic, where I'm always walking by. So you walk by them, do a quick couple paddle works out. You'll never have to do hardcore paddle workout again, and you'll never lose it. I um, mean, that's what I do now. I still do, um, when, when it's summer right now, when things are flat, um, I push myself for sure, um, but um, I'm not, not as hard as you guys might think. So I'm gonna do a lot of paddle maintenance stuff. And that's something I wish I'd known when I was younger because I never ever would have had to miss a swell or miss a wave or had low confidence on um, paddle maintenance. Um, make sure you can have and uh, or keep um, high level surfing for the rest of your life and that's it. So this is a crazy story for number three and it's psoas muscle release. Um, so muscle release is super important. If you find you are really unflexible and you have a hard time stretching, probably need some muscle release. So it can be done all over the body. But for me, so I was having insane pains uh, in my stomach on, on this one side. It was sharp when I would cough, it would hurt. When I would bounce around, when I was driving, it would hurt. Uh, I was getting worried that I had like something life-threatening. I would honestly, like I was like, oh, like really putting off seeing the doctor because I was worried. I went and saw the doctor and they checked me out and did like a, like a physical exam. Um, and he said everything about it was consistent with a hernia. I was like, okay, well that's better. I may need surgery, but at least it's not what I was fearing it might be. Um, so I have to go to get a, I can't remember what it was called, an MRI or whatever they look inside you. What they, they do is they inject you with some kind of fluid and you may have had it, uh, like heat your body, it makes you feel like you peed your pants. Um, and then they put you into the machine where they scan you. So what they did was, so before you go in there, you got to, I was signing papers like, one out of like a thousand people has an adverse reaction to this fluid, um, you can die, it's happened, people can have permanent um, life-changing injuries from it, but it's rare. So you just sign a waiver, say if that happens to you, you can't see the hospital. So I signed that, read, I was like, holy shit, I didn't know that. Anyways, one in a thousand, whatever. So I go in there and I'm hooked up to the IV, getting ready to inject the stuff, and they have me hold my hands over my shoulders, on my head, over my head, and then they're like, okay, ready, we're gonna release the fluid. So they release the fluid, immediately I started this feeling this insane pain in my shoulder. And I remember the last thing I remember saying was, ow, it hurts. I'm like, oh, it really hurts. Oh, it really hurts. And then I blacked out. It felt like I was, I've never had a seizure, but it felt like it because I couldn't control my thoughts. I was like fighting to like be conscious. It was like, like all these things were flying through my head. I was like out of control. And I woke back up, I was surrounded by nurses. They were like, they're calling it a code blue. They're taking all my vitals. And like, it was like, it was like panic city. Because they, they had thought I was having an adverse reaction and dying. So anyways, I stayed at the hospital um, for the whole night and they did a bunch of tests and they found out what had happened is that it had caused so much pain that it, I can't remember what it was called, it was a vaso something, some kind of blood restricting thing. Basically put, in layman's terms, is I passed out from pain. The pain got so bad that I passed out, which is insane. I thought I really had pain threshold, but I guess it was, yeah, it was just so insane that I, I, I passed out. All that was to learn I didn't have a hernia. <laughs> what I did have, well, I, I didn't, didn't tell me this at the time, but I later figured out, like, I just had a psoas muscle that was so tight, it was like a piece of beef jerky, 
and that it was causing so much pain. It was like wrapped around like the bone and like pulling everything into itself. It was like collapsing my hip into itself and it was affecting my stomach and everything. So I, I, I found this tool, it's called a So Right and it's melt, made specifically for releasing the psoas muscles. The only thing I use it for, all you do is lay on it like this and you grind it into your psoas muscle. And I only had it on the one side and I think it was because, because I used to drive a lot um, for my job. Um, I think that's why. So having this for a few months, I released it and it almost never comes back. Every once in a while it does, but I can tell now because I know what it feels like to have it released and I know what it feels like to have it tight. And it pulls on my back, it pulls on everything, and it like crunches me up. So a lot of people that I've met now who have back problems, hip problems, um, inflexible in the hamstrings, um, indigestion, all kinds of crazy things, are having tight psoas muscles. They're really hard to reach. It's the only tool I've ever found that can do it. There's, I have tons of massage tools. Nothing else even gets close. It's the only one thing I use it for, and it's so valuable. It absolutely changed my life. I thought I had something life-threatening, and it was just a psoas muscle that was ruining my life. That psoas muscle was ruining my life. Figuring this out was a game changer, and I know this has been a game changer for a lot of people around the world. This is actually a really fast, massive growing uh, company because they solve a really, really common problem, and they do it expertly, so that's number three. All right, the next one is dynamic stretching versus long hold stretching. I remember growing up, all the fitness and health stuff that I was learning that was like put out by the governments and like the schools and everything that has turned out to have been wrong has been insane. Um, and one of them was long hold stretching. I remember people would say, don't do bouncing when you're stretching because that's how you can tear your muscles. That's completely wrong. Um, you can definitely hurt yourself stretching, but dynamic stretching um, is a thousand times better than long hold stretching before exercise, um, surfing included. I remember one time I was working for the, this giant um, oil company, massive corporation, and they would do like, I don't know, just part of like one of their like health promotions where everyone would get up and stretch together in the morning. And we'd have these like massive 300 pounders like teaching us about stretching. And remember I was doing dynamic stuff and he was telling me, he's like, no, you're gonna hurt yourself. I'm like, I'm like you're the last person I need telling me about how to be healthy. But anyways, that, that's just, that just goes to show where this information, people just say it, they don't even know why. Um, so long hold stretching, actually if you do it before exercise, it increases the chances of pulling muscles. Um, it's been proven over and over. So dynamic stretching, um, I used to do long hold stretching and I would get cramps a lot. Um, and I, I pulled a bunch of muscles as well too, especially in my, uh, my hamstrings um, because I was doing long hold stretching before exercise. Now learning dynamic stretching has changed the game because it warms the body up, um, it gets your muscles looser and prepares them like in a pulsing motion to do activity rather than just lengthening them. Um, so long hold stretching is good if you wanna lengthen the muscle, but I only ever do it at the end of the day while I'm watching TV with my wife. Um, and I do it even rare, more rare because I'm just doing so much dynamic stuff. And so examples are just swinging or like repeated motions like this or like this. Cool thing about this is I can get a warm up and a full body stretch in like one tenth the time I could do long hold stretching. So it's more time efficient, more effective, healthier, better for performance, better for longevity, better for health, all that stuff compared to long hold stretching. So dynamic stretching every single day is one of the most important parts of my routine and I wish I'd known that when I was younger. And the last thing I wish I knew was young was a better definition of what success meant. And I'm gonna give you two definitions or examples of what it means that have changed my life. So number one, um, what is success if you were just to define it? The best de definition I've heard is the setting and achieving of goals. So it's different for everyone, right? So setting goals. Um, that's been massive for me when it comes to raising a family, having a wife, having a home, living where I want, running a business, surfing, fitness, all that stuff. I set ultra specific goals um, and then do everything I can to achieve those goals. And it feels really, really good when you've worked at something for a long time and then it happens. Um, and I, 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 I never get sick of it. Um, a good definition of uh, happiness is progress. That's how we stay happy is to progress through life. And the second definition of success is success can be defined as small daily disciplines repeated every day. So it's not massive kill yourself, beat yourself into the ground every single day or you'll be a loser. No, it's the little things repeated every day is important. So when it comes to my fitness, um, I'm in the best shape of my life by far. And I was a, a really good athlete growing up. Endurance, flexibility, strength. I've said this before, the only thing I don't have that I used to when I was getting speed, like sprinting, top end speed, but 
hey, Father Time's undefeated. But I don't work out as hardcore as I did back in the day. When I was an athlete playing on soccer and basketball teams, it was like up early, hardcore, beating ourselves into the ground because like our goal was to win, right? So we were highly motivated by that. But I had so many holes because I was pushing myself even too hard. So now, um, you know, the old saying, work smart, work hard. Well, um, do both. But part of working smart is not working too hard. Recovery has been a huge part of mine. So being in the best shape of my life in all these areas, you would think on paper I should be working harder than ever. Um, I'm, I work hard. I never miss a day of the stretching and all that stuff. But it's not as hardcore as you would think. Um, to, to build a business where we would be able to reach people in over 60 countries, thousands of clients every single year. Um, it's just doing the little daily things, like putting out the free content all the time um, and enjoying doing it. So um, I, I, I was a solopreneur for a long time. Now we've built a team that helps a lot, but they were, they were built tiny piece by piece. Um, and over time, when I look back, a lot has happened, but in the day-to-day -day grind, it was just like, I don't know, it, it wasn't, it doesn't feel like it was that hard. It felt like if I were to look at it in the beginning and see how hard it would have been to get into the best shape of my life, to build a business, to um, surf double overhead waves, um, it would look like a lot, but when you're in the day to day in the process of it, it's not, it's really not that hard, but it all, it comes down to knowing what to do. Part of knowing what to do is knowing what not to do. There's a million things with hydro mind that didn't work when we tried to grow it. Um, there are a million things with my fitness that didn't work. And like these five things that I wish I knew before, these are the things I had to find. I had to dig through the rubble. It's like the diamond in the rough. And these things were just waiting to be discovered by me. When I implemented them, it immediately changed my life in very significant ways. And there's a ton of those out there throughout the world. And you find them by trying different things and hitting those daily disciplines. So I figured out what works for me that makes me a good um, business owner, a good surfer, um, a good teacher, a good father, a good husband. Um, and I, I, that's all I do every single day. Same things every day. My days are very, very monotonous. My life has never been better. Success is small disciplines repeated every single day. So if you want to change your fitness, if you want to change your health, your surfing, your relationships, your financial situation, all you have to do is figure out what are those small things that you need to do every single day to change your life. And I guarantee the goals that you set will soon become the goals you achieved. If you want help, the surfing, health, and the fitness side, we've already uncovered, we've discovered those things, those diamonds in the rough, the little things to get the biggest result, like the life-changing, like like the way like I healed my back, like the way um, I healed my psoas muscle, um, the way I never lost my paddle strength. Those are massive things that took me a decade to figure out, and we put those in there, and that's all the program has. All the program is the little things to get the big results. So if you need some life-changing advice, if you need that boost, if you need surfing and health and fitness so bad, um, and you want the fastest path, I guarantee you we have the fastest path. We've discovered all the things that work the best, um, and that's all that we do every single day is make sure that we get people who want them, or so people who need them, get them. So you can keep surfing for the rest of your life and surf the best. Um, the best waves, um, feel the best, be pain free, um, super confident. And one of the cool thing about when you when you surf great, it affects your whole life. I, I, I like to put it this way. For some reason, man, when I surf good on a heavy day, I'm about to get beat up, but I still catch set waves. I, I, I hug my kids different. I don't know. I just felt a, a new kind of energy. So I like to say the way you show up in the ocean is the way you show up in real life. So if you want to be a great, have a great life, become a great surfer. It's that simple. So if you're into that, there's the link down below this video. In that link is a video. Video explains our complete process, how we do it, why we do it, um, and how you can get involved if you choose to do so. My name is Kyle Ross. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I'll talk to you soon.